Hi everyone, this is Maya Zahira with Psychic Protection Sanctuary. And let me just adjust my camera a little bit. Um, so we are here today for our monthly Facebook Live. And um, <clears throat> I am just going to be answering some of your general questions. So as we have people hop on, um, I will go ahead and answer. Now how I do this is um, I don't actually do um, personal readings, so I'm not going to be reading your energy um, or answering psychic questions because that's what, um, what we do during a paid session. But there are lots of things that you can ask, um, any, any and all questions about psychic protection, um, entities, um, paranormal activity, um, how energy works, how to manage your own energy, um, any sensitivity issues that you're having, any empath issues, and that sort of thing. So I see we have a few people joining on. As you, um, as you come on, if you could leave your, if you could type in your name, and actually we already have your name, <laughs> go ahead and put in your uh, location that you're joining us from. And you will have to excuse me. I, this, I literally just said, it's 6 p.m. right now <clears throat> on a Monday. And this is how committed I am to you guys. Um, I spent the whole day in bed because <laughs> um, I've been sick. And uh, I just got up and took a shower and here I am. So we're gonna do this thing. Um, and I did have this is the first time that we've done just a QA. and a um, So this is kind of an experiment. So I do have a couple of um, questions in the back of my mind of some things that people have asked me recently. And I think we'll go ahead and go over those since we're still waiting for people to join. Um, who are the few people who are here? Go ahead and say hi and tell us where you're joining from. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna get a, grab a drink. Okay, so I'm going to choose a topic. I actually get this question a lot. Um, a lot of people who have worked with some of my material before, either they've read my book or they've been working with me in uh, some of my programs, so they know about some of the stuff that I teach, and so that has broadened their mind, and so they know about false light entities. And because um, if you don't know, about them, then you don't know to ask this question. <laughs> so a lot of the people who ask about this are the people who've had some exposure to, to the work that I do. So, um, so just to give you a little nutshell definition before I go in, jump in and tell you about the common question that I get. So a false light entity, what I call a false light entity, are spiritual beings who are actually not beings of light but they are beings of darkness. Uh, they have malevolent, negative intentions, and they are disguised as light. So literally dark, dark disguised as light. So <laughs> if you recognize, that sounds familiar. That's the, the, na the title of my book, Darkness Disguised as Light. So uh, this is actually very, very common in the spiritual realm. Um, entities pretending to be something that they are not and the reason why they do that is because it is easier to manipulate a person okay um, and again so we have some people who've joined so go ahead and tell us the uh, location that you're joining from and just say hi um, and I'm just gonna keep on um, talking about my topic until we get some questions because our main focus today is on questions okay so all right so false light entities, these are very common and um, the most common things that I see them disguise as <clears throat> are angels and loved ones and, um, uh, and then also ascended masters. So let's talk about that. So angels, um, I think everybody knows what angels are. So. Um, you know, that they'll either show up as a being of light that tells you that it's an angel 
or it'll show up as a being that has big wings because maybe that's how you identify angels, uh, that sort of thing. And um, yeah, it's kind of freaky because you'd like to think that if you believe that an angel is appearing to you, that that would be true. And real angels do appear to people, but actually more often than not, there are false light um, entities messing with people. So it's really infuriating and um, really not fair. It's really wrong. It's really bad that they do that. So um, uh, then loved ones. Loved ones means, um, I'm, by loved ones, I'm referring to beings, uh, to to your loved ones, your family members that have passed on, your friends that have passed on. Uh, and yes, they can actually, um, you can have, you can experience vi real visitations from them. But again, more often than not, it's actually false light entities. So it'll be a being that's pretending to be somebody's grandfather or grandmother or, or aunt or whatever. Um, and then uh, thirdly, ascended masters. Ascended masters are beings, spiritual beings on the other side that we think of as like extra holy. They have uh, really, um, you know, moved up the, the spiritual ladder, so to speak. They're very wise. Uh, so like uh, Master Jesus, Buddha, uh, Mother Mary, uh, you know, the saints. Um, there's just tons and tons of them, right? A lot of people, there are a lot of people who work with Ascended Masters. And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. So there's nothing wrong with working with angels, with working with your loved ones, with working with Ascended Masters, with uh, working with spirit guides and that sort of thing. Um, but there's, let me see here. I just want to check something. Okay. I know we have people, I'm just not getting anyone's comments and usually I am getting everyone's comments, so that's why I'm just double checking. Okay, so um, so it's totally fine to have, uh, to, have to work with spirit guides, to, uh, to have a spiritual team around you. That's actually um, important and healthy. Uh, but let's get back to the question that I said that I get a lot from people who, who've learned um, uh, a little bit about what I teach so a really common question people will message me and say that they've uh, that they had um, you know a visitation or a dream or they were meditating and they saw an image or felt a presence um, and they feel like it's a spirit guide or a loved one etc but they're not sure um, and they want to check with me so uh, first of all I think that's awesome um, that people are questioning. You actually should question. And um, also just a thought that's pop popping up here is I don't think that anyone should become dependent on referring to me or to anyone else who can see energies um, to be able to tell you what's right and what's not right for you. But here's the thing, I'm able to see this stuff, I'm able to see false light entities. Um, and as far as I can tell, walking around out in the world, I'm, I'm like way more tuned into it than anyone else that I've encountered. And so a lot of people are not able to identify false light entities at all. So what I always extend the invitation to my, uh, my students and the people in my groups that if you're ever not sure, if, you're, if you ever feel like a new um, angel or spirit guide has come into your life and is, and is wanting to work with you, and you want to make sure that, that that being is who they say they are, I always extend the invitation. You can get um, uh, my opinion, my professional opinion on it, and um, just post a message in the group, and I'm happy to tell you what I think. Um, and someone messaged me the other day, and she's one of my master students. And I tuned in for her, and what I got was, yes, the guy, the the spirit guide who is coming in to work with you, is on the up and up. Everything's good, uh, but it's really good that you're questioning. So you should be questioning. Um, you know, there's someone else that I know 
who I was going to for um, uh, healing slash spiritual sessions and um, she has a guide who stands right behind her who sometimes and th this is what I can see this is what I know just from like I'm not trying to do a reading on this person I just like look at her and I'm engaging with her as a person and I can just see this big being standing behind her that sometimes pretends to be her aunt <clears throat> sometimes pretends to be her grandmother and sometimes pretends to be a female spirit guide and it is definitely not what it says that it is and it was really hard to continue um, you know being a client <laughs> in, a, in a capacity where this person was working with um, you know was uh, often during our sessions would start channeling this um, this being and I could tell her face would change um, and her voice would change her eyes would change and she would start um, you know sharing her messages um, and I don't think she even realized that she was doing it and in that capacity since I was a client and I was her client she wasn't my client I didn't um, you know I wasn't really in the capacity to tell her what I was seeing um, this is actually so 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 prevalent it's like in this in the spiritual and metaphysical world um, I would say that about 80% of the people out there are working with at least one or several false light entities and the difference usually you know whether someone's working with one or several um, it really depends on how discerning the person is so there are some people God bless them who are just so open and they literally will tell me that they do not believe in, in um, setting boundaries they believe that everything is holy and everything is of God and that there's no no reason for them to use discernment they should just be totally open and I have a word for uh, what I see around people who have that point of view um, what I see a, is literally an it, infestation they are infested there's like just tons of false light entities around them um, you know, and they're, they're doing channeling work with these beings that aren't even really who they say they are so that's kind of freaky <laughs> but then on the other end of the spectrum there are people who are um, uh, you know in their in their personality who they are personally they have um, good boundaries and discernment overall and so they don't tend to have a whole infestation of those um, kinds of beings the um, beings that are pretending to be something that they're not um, and so what I often will see around those people are just uh, you know, mostly um, angels and guides that are genuine that actually are who they say they are uh, with maybe one or two guides that are not who they say they are mixed in and you know as to why the genuine valid guides that are standing around them allow the false light entities to be there or to exist um, that's a question that I've been asking the divine for a few years now and it definitely catapulted me into uh, you know what I'll call an existential crisis <laughs> a couple of years ago because wondering even why this is allowed to happen is just very unsettling it really is but the people who tend to have a higher level of discernment tend to have uh, fewer but usually have at least one or two and now I want to just stop right here and say that um, I always discourage any form of finger pointing or like they he has a false light entity or she has she's infested or blah 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 because that doesn't serve anyone that doesn't help the situation 
It doesn't help them, it doesn't help you, and the truth is that almost everyone um, in the uh, spiritual, any, any spiritual communities, anywhere, people who are into the alternative spiritual stuff, um, it's, it is, it's a real problem. It's a real problem. Um, but it's not a problem everywhere. Like when I go just like when I, when I engage with people who are just like in the average world, not the metaphysical slash spiritual communities, but just like the average world, um, you know, people have all sorts of different spiritual things going on and, and, um, but very rarely do I see the false light entity issue. And it seems to be very prevalent in the new age metaphysical spiritual communities. And it's because that's a very easy way, um, for those folks to be targeted and manipulated. So there are other ways that other people are targeted and manipulated. Um, like for example, someone who has a history of addiction or, um, or depression, like really deep depression, um, would often have issues with, um, either, um, ghosts attached to them. So human spirits attached to them who were, uh, who were addicts in their lifetime, um, or dark beings like dark beings who are not pretending to be light, but are just presenting themselves as they are. And that person is just in an energy of such suffering that those beings attach to them. Okay. So there's like, I could talk on and on about different kinds of spirit attachments, but, uh, but I'm not going to, that would take, that's a whole other <laughs> rabbit hole right there. So spirit attachments are more common than you might think. Uh, but my focus right now is on the false light entity attachments and the reason why they're so prevalent in the new age slash metaphysical slash spiritual communities is because it's so, it's so easy. It's, it's been so easy for those beings to come in and manipulate large groups of people by pretending to be St. Germain or pretending to be, um, Mary Magdalene or pretending to be fill in the blank. Okay. Pretending to be Archangel Michael. Um, and then people who don't know any better. In fact, this is why I wrote my book. Like I spent hours, I spent a year and a half writing my book. It is not something that I expect to make a million dollars off of or anything like that. It was something, uh, in fact, last month I made, um, it was like, 50 bucks or something like that for like hours and hours and hours of work. Um, I probably, pr probably shouldn't share that, that info, but the reason why I wrote the book is because I want people to know about this phenomenon. Like, I don't care if, um, I just want to get that information out there. So if you haven't read the book, darkness disguised as light, I encourage you to do so. Um, it's on Amazon and it's by me, Maya Zahira, M-A-Y-A-Z-A-H-I-R-A. -A -A. Um, <laughs> I didn't intend to get on here and plug my book, but it's there if you want it. Um, so I talk about lots of different things, including false light entities. That's kind of an underlying theme because um, I actually was working with a spiritual healer a couple years ago who had a false light entity attached to her and I came under attack by that entity and it was horrible. It was six weeks of living hell. And since then I have, uh, after I got through that, that was when I started focusing my spiritual work more, uh, on helping people with, um, psychic protection issues. And I've worked with a lot of people over the years who've, uh, over the last couple of years who have, um, had false light entities, um, attached to them. People who have pretended to be, uh, um, entities who've pretended to be loved ones, 
and uh, the thing is is when it pretends to be something that that you want it to be when it pretends to be uh, someone who was totally beloved to you when they were alive or when it pretends to be um, you know uh, an ascended being that you really think is awesome then it's like you just open your arms and you just you know welcome them in and then once once they're in once they're hooked in that they, they will hook in energy cords so it's like a it's like an electrical cord plug-in they will plug in once they're plugged in it's it's a lot harder to get rid of them so um, I do have more to say about this uh, that is a really common question that I get. People will message me or, or um, post a question in one of my groups and ask about um, something that's been appearing to them or connecting with them and they want to just make sure that it is what it says that it is. And I totally applaud people who are um, checking. I think that's good. Uh, I'm going to make a note for myself here. I, so everybody's so quiet today. I don't know if I've just, if my comments just aren't working or what's going on. Does anyone have any questions? Because today is, was really supposed to all be about Q&A. So we'll see if there's any questions coming through. And then I'm going to give you a tip. Okay, no questions. Wow, you guys are super silent today. If you have been posting questions and I have not been seeing them, I apologize for not acknowledging acknowledging them. And um, hello to all of you silent people who are watching today. This is really unusual because usually we have a lot of a lot of questions, um, and we don't, and a lot of um, interaction. So that's okay. We're going to go with the flow. Um, we're going to just chat for a couple more minutes here. Um, so. Like I mentioned, a really common question that I get from people is, um, is this spirit guide or loved one or angel or master that's been connecting with me, are they who they say they are? You know, is this safe? Because once their mind is open and they, they know about false light entities, they want to make sure that that's not happening to them. And I applaud that. That's a very common question that I get. And, and I love that people are questioning that. So. Um, so here's, here's a tip that I have for everybody, and it's a very strong suggestion. My strong suggestion is that everyone, everyone should check to see if you have any spirit guides, angels, etc. that are in your spiritual team who are not beneficial and or might be false light entities. In other words, they're not who they say they are. Now, some of you watching this um, might barely know anything about working with spirit guides and angels, and so you don't really have um, you know, direct contact uh, with that sort of thing yet, and that's totally fine. Um, so, you know, if you ever dive into that, then you know to do so with, with discernment and keep listening because I think you'll get something from this. So the rest of you who are watching, who are, um, you know, who have been working with um, your guardian angels, your guides, ascended masters, you are aware that you have a team of spiritual beings working with you and maybe you have actively worked on connecting and communi communicating with them. Um, and you know, maybe you've had some experiences with them, or maybe um, you are very in touch with them and you channel messages, you um, um, ask intuitive questions, and they're the ones that help give you the answers. Um, so, if you're very involved with them, uh, so whether you are just a little bit involved with your guides and angels or a lot, my tip, my very strong suggestion is that you please starting now, vet all of them. So by that I mean tune in, take the time to tune in with each one. You can even imagine gathering them in a circle or if you just know one, like some of you I know are working with several. 
some of you really only connect with one, maybe your guardian angel, maybe a guide, whoever it is that you work with, place them in front of you or in a semicircle and connect with each one, one at a time, and ask them, are you who you say you are? If you are, and make a statement, make a proclamation, if you are not of the light and not of God, or fill in the blank with whatever word you have for divine, if you are not from divine source, then you need to leave now. Now, when I say that everybody should do this, when I became aware of false light um, entity issues, I tuned in and I checked my guides. And this was a couple years ago. And I, uh, I kicked out, I had a whole big team working with me. <laughs> I didn't know what false light entities were, like most people don't. I didn't even know what that was, which is why they're so prevalent because it's been so easy to fool so many people and to manipulate people. But once I became aware of it, I checked my team and I found two guides that were, actually I would not describe them as false light. They were both guides that were not at the level of integrity that I choose for myself and those that I surround myself with. Um, they were more ego oriented than I, than is compatible for me. Um, and what I mean by that is that when I was going through and questioning each of my guides, are you who you say that you are? And um, there were two. Uh, there, was, there was one guide that I was working with who was um, like a Reiki guide, but much higher, sort of, supposedly. Like much more um, knowledgeable, worked with way more than just Reiki. But that's the best way that I could describe him. Uh, and a uh, very wise Asian man, that, that, that's where Reiki comes from, uh, but much more broad scope of knowledge than just Reiki. So that seems really cool, right? When I started to question him, are you who you say you are? Um, he got pissed and his eyes turned black. Um, now, I, here's the thing, with clairvoyance, with um, psychic sight, sometimes what you're seeing is literal and sometimes what you're seeing is um, symbolic. What I was seeing was an indication that he was not um, beneficial right um he i could feel his ego he was like how dare you question me that's that's what the black eyes it was like anger and i was like okay that's not okay and um you know someone who's not really clear with their discernment and boundaries might waffle back and forth and say yeah, but he has all of this healing knowledge and there could be all these people that could benefit from, you know, him being connected, blah, blah, blah him being connected to me because uh, he's just this knowledgeable, like, super Reiki guide. No, not worth it. So not worth it. He got the boot. Okay, I kicked him out. I had a picture that um, a clairvoyant ha artist had drawn for me that was of him and I took that and removed it and um, and I said I was very respectful I said thank you hang on a second gotta fix something I said thank you very much for your service and we are not no long we are no longer a fit thank you and bye and I took the picture off the wall and I wrapped it and I put it away later I disposed of it Okay. And the same thing with another one of my guides at that time was a um, wise woman 
um, trying to think of really what to call her. She was uh, an old crone and she knew a lot about ritual and about herbs and about um, occult secrets and um, some pretty cool stuff actually. And she had come in and started working with me um, at a time when I was in meditation and I was calling in a new guide to, to work with me to um, help with the work that I do. And again, she wasn't she wasn't like a demon pretending to be uh, an angel or, or anything like that. In this case, again, um, I, she was not a false light entity. She was too ego based because when I asked her, um, you know, who are you? I was vetting her. I was checking her, right? When I asked her, who are you? She got, she got pissed as well. And I could feel from her that she is the kind of practitioner that is okay with working the full spectrum of energy. There are a lot of people in the world who are this way. And what I mean is she would be okay with activating healing or activating harm. And according to her personal code, that would be totally fine. Okay, so she works in the gray um, and she doesn't have a distinction uh, she has a different level of integrity than I do and I'll do respect to those who work the full spectrum that's not me and I again told her thank you for your service I appreciate you and we are no longer fit and I also had a picture that I had found that reminded me of her at, uh, and I had hung it on my wall and so I removed that as well and um, covered it with a cloth and later and, and I took it out of the house but then later I completely disposed of it um, the rest of my guides actually for a period of time I um, the rest of my guides there was nothing wrong with them but I felt like I've been working with so many I just brought it down to a skeleton crew because <laughs> I had like tons I had like all these guides and angels and so I just brought it down to my two guardian angels and I'm doing this because um, Isabel is usually on my right side and Jacob is usually on my left side and I vetted them uh, and there are a couple of other guides that um, I continued to work with and I very slowly um, after several months began to invite some more in um, as I developed that discernment. Um, and I did, I, I very, very much, I was not afraid to vet my closest guardian angels, these two guardian angels. Um, and what I noticed is that when I would question them, it did not upset them at all. They were glad that I was doing it. So I would make that suggestion to you as well to notice if you're questioning any of your guides, angels, etc., that you work with, if they get angry, defensive, or whatever, that is your immediate red flag that you are not to work with them anymore. Um, if they are supportive of you questioning and making all of your guides and angels go through a vetting process, then that's a good sign. Okay? So, uh, do we have any questions? Another thought that I have, I've been thinking about this recently, um, and it's that uh, the, the group of people that I said have good discernment, there, there's people in the spiritual community that unfortunately don't have very good boundaries or discernment, so they're like welcoming everything in and they've got an like, infestation of false light entities around them. Uh, and then there's people who have pretty decent discernment and and I've noticed there's a tendency with the people who have pretty good discernment to automatically make an assumption that they that all of the guides and angels that are working with them are, are okay because they because they wouldn't be the type of person that would attract a false light entity because they have good boundaries and that wouldn't happen to them so there there's a there's a level of denial 
that that happens um, that I've noticed and I've noticed um, yeah I've just I've noticed a level of denial so if that comes up for you if you're like oh I don't need to check I I know my guides still need to check still need to check and not just once but throughout your life um, any beings that are coming in um, it's important to check um, and I have to be hyper vigilant because I'll have um, new stuff come in I'll, like you know we have guides and angels that come in come and go and um, it's like they don't they <laughs> they just keep trying with me that like they just keep trying to send false light stuff every once in a while to see if they'll fool me and it doesn't fool me um, but it's just oh my gosh it's so prevalent um, so my encouragement would be for everybody to check with your angels your guides or whatever you know whatever spiritual things that you're working with um, and let me extend that I had one of my students was asking me recently about um, she had a deck of Doreen Virtue Ascended Master uh, Oracle cards. And I think I'm going to do a video about Doreen Virtue, and I just haven't had a chance to. But um, just in a nutshell, Doreen Virtue is someone who is in the, the New Age metaphysical community. She has published tons of books on angels and fairies and spiritual things and she has created a whole bunch of um, oracle cards, angel cards, angel t angel tarot cards, uh, fairy fairy cards. Um, she also has a deck on ascended masters, and so on. And I can't remember how many years ago it was. It was um, a couple of years ago, at least, that she made a big announcement that she uh, and she had always said that she was Christian, but she made a very big announcement that she was fully aligned, like more fully aligning with Christianity. And um, no, I have no issue with that. I mean, everyone is free to, to practice what they want. That did actually bring up a lot of stuff for people. And I'm going to do, I'm probably going to do a video on this. But what I want to get at is that one of the things that she said was that she, um, she wanted people to use more discernment. She felt like some of the guides in her Ascended Master deck should not be trusted. So that was one thing that I found was interesting because it was kind of around the same time that I had my, uh, that I really started to open up and be able to see so clearly false light entities. Um, and so it really was, it was around that time. So that's interesting. So what I really got from that was that something very significant happened to her. Um, I know she had some visions and I think some things really shook her up. And she had some kind of eye-opening experience that pointed out to her that more discernment was needed. So yes, there are some some issues with the fact that she made probably millions of dollars off of some of these decks that now she's saying mm, maybe you shouldn't use those decks and so that does bring up a lot of questions and considerations and possible ethical considerations and 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 all of that and I totally get that like I totally see all of that uh, but what I really zeroed in on in that when that whole hubbub um, drama was going on when people were so upset what I was really honing in on was the fact that she had ha she had gotten shaken up by something and she was seeing things differently all of a sudden and she knew that some of those ascended masters that she had brought through um, through meditation into her ascended master deck that some of them could not be trusted now she did not use the term false light entity. That's a term that I've been using, but it's just an interesting parallel. All right, so if you ever have any questions about 
um, any guides or angels that you're wanting to work with, I'm more than happy to help you with your discernment process. So you can always um, message me. The, my preferred uh, place for those kinds of questions would be on the public group. So it's called Psychic Protection Sanctuary. It's the Facebook group, and that's where this Facebook Live is taking place. So if you ever want to know, uh, you know, if you're ever having trouble uh, with discernment, then um, I will help you. And the goal is for you then to develop your own discernment over time so that you don't always have to come to me. But when, when you're first starting out and you're first beginning to understand these things, that sometimes it helps to have somebody who is a little bit, a couple of steps further along, who can take your hand and, and help show you. Well, everybody, uh, we have nine. We have nine people here, and I don't know why it's been so silent. And I'm gonna maybe find out later that everybody's been leaving tons of comments. Um, this ended up being an awesome 45-minute uh, talk, and <laughs> it was fun to share all of that with you. Um, again, so it's a quarter to seven right now, and I only got up out of bed just a little while ago and took a shower and sat down to do this. So. Uh, this is me uh, bringing forth information from, you know, being totally in brain fog and everything. So um, these are my truths that are there no matter how I'm feeling. So I'm happy to share them with you. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find me. And if you did post questions and I didn't see them, feel free to post again and tag me and uh, I'll be happy to answer. All right, everybody, until next time. Um, and remember, I try to have a Facebook Live um, once a month. It's usually the first Monday of the month. Um, I am in a discernment process of um, maybe adding more or doing some more, uh, maybe doing YouTube Live or doing some lives on my business page and that sort of thing. Uh, but I wanna keep this core um, foundation live right here this Facebook Live is the first Monday of the month, uh, but keep your eyes open for any other possible things as well. All right, everybody, until next time, sending you much love and peace and discernment.